are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, grant in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me, and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. <clears throat> In thy forbearance, take me not away. I know that for thy sake I bear reproach. Though thy words were found, and I ate them, and thy words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by thy name. O Lord, God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because thy hand was upon me, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Wilt thou be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make to you, this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. 
outdo one another in showing honor. Never flag in zeal. Be aglow with the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? For what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every man for what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever noticed how some movies or Netflix series, how some of them just instantly grab us and resonate, while others are just too much trouble to even figure out? If, you, if I think about it now, 17 years later, I'm still not sure if the movie Lost in Translation even has a point. Uh, and I think the only reason people oohed and odd over it is because the a director had the last name Coppola. Or think about going to an art museum and you stop at a, at a random painting that catches your eye. And after about 30 seconds, you decide to read the little plaque down there and it says, Oil on Canvas. A portrait of a walnut. And you sort of step back a bit and you look and go, that's a walnut? Do you remember the old um, Rorschach ink blot tests? Hey, I took one. We had to, I don't know if you had to take one, but my senior year, yep, see, they cut it out after me. But the, <laughs> the, the, um, we had to take one in my senior year at seminary before I could come here and serve you. I had to take the Rorschach ink blot test. It was part of the psychological evaluation. And I knew if I wanted to pass, I had to say, it's a bat. So I um, said it's a bat, but what I saw was clearly a two-headed angel cooking bacon. <laughs> I didn't say that, however. Because would you believe it or not, there actually is a mental hospital on the other end of campus. And I wanted to be here with y'all. It's a bat. Or, or think about the first time that you, have you ever joined, the first time you join a book club. The first time you go to a book club meeting, do you remember how you felt totally insufficient when everyone in the room started sharing their takeaway? from the novel, and that you thought the novel was really about swans on the River Thames. But everybody else in the room clearly knew it was a profound expose of emotional and erotic repression. The real reason things happen like this every day all over the world has something to do with perspective being able or unable to understand something from the point of view of another person. And perspective can change 
everything. Today, in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, it is St. Peter who lacks the ability to see in any other way than what is right in front of him. And Jesus rebukes him. In what we have translated, it comes off something like, Peter, you're on the side of man, not the side of God. But really a better translation is, Peter, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. I want to just talk about two things today. Our perspective and His perspective. Human perspective, limited human perspective, and divine eternal perspective. And I want to make my case by doing what may seem like a really weird exercise. Uh, hey, I remember the guy, remember I'm the guy who saw the angel cooking bacon. So I just want you to roll with me. And I want to do this because, again, perspective can change everything. All right, let's do it like this. We're going to take a few seconds, not too long, and we will imagine, or I want you to imagine that you, not your children or spouse, get to write your own obituary. You get the last word. I know it sounds strange and maybe even creepy, but just indulge me. I'll be quiet for a few seconds. So go ahead, write in your mind what you want printed in the Herald Tribune. Okay, who knew 20 seconds lasted that long? <laughs> Most of us would love something like this. She loved her family and her parish church, Church of the Redeemer. She was entirely devoted to her husband. Of 70 years, she planned and hosted many charitable and civic galas. She worked tirelessly behind the scenes to establish St. Swithin's Home for the Infirm. And she will always be remembered for her quick wit, smile, and hospitality. She died peacefully in her sleep. Let's say that obit is written clearly from the perspective of how we would like others to remember us. Now, let's do the same thing over again, but this time, let's change perspective. And let's write an obit as we secretly see ourselves. And let's pretend that the Herald Tribune has a fact checker for the obits and only the brutally honest thoughts and things can go in there. The real truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God, no fake news, okay? Not even the booze and the barbiturates let her escape memories of that night 60 years ago. She never forgave herself. Others saw a woman with her act together, but she only felt flaws and failure, guilt and grief. Every day was yet another trip around the all-you-can-eat anxiety buffet. Tom said she died in her sleep, but we wonder if she overdosed. Now, the problem. The problem with both of these obits, the problem with this whole morbid exercise, is that it turns out that 99.9% .9 of all obituaries you'll ever read, whether they are sappy sweet or uh, shockingly salacious, either way, they're all written from a terribly inadequate, limited human perspective. Do you remember Lady Macbeth? Do you remember her myopic, very dour perspective on life? Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. 
but God's perspective is altogether different. T.S. Eliot may have been leaning into this in Burnt Norton when he wrote time past and time future. What might have been and what has been point to one end which is always present. Because God is eternal. Everything is present. What a perspective. So I have one final exercise this morning. Let's give the Son of God the first and last word of our lives. Let's hear about our lives from his perspective. She took one look at me and all the brokenness, confusion, emptiness, rejection, shame, and guilt were no more. She found out that I really am the friend of sinners, that I am he who gives to the thirsty water from the spring of life without payment. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I told her, it is finished. I'm keen on the books of the late Brennan Manning. His favorite book, my favorite book of his, is the Ragamuffin Gospel. Good news for the bedraggled, beat up, and burnt out. I love this question, he asks. Do you believe that Jesus loves you beyond worthiness and unworthiness? Beyond fidelity and infidelity? That he loves you in the morning sun and in the evening rain? That he loves you when your intellect denies it, your emotions refuse it, your whole being rejects it? Do you believe that God loves without condition or reservation and loves you this very moment? My deepest prayer in life is that you and I might have the faith to answer yes. Because saying yes means that you and I will begin to see things from a different perspective as God himself sees them. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Remember, perspective changes everything. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen.
Let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. And we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word of We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. We pray for our president, Donald, our governor, Ron, and those serving in our armed forces at home and abroad. We pray for Daphne, our bishop, for Charleston, our priest in charge, and for all the clergy of this parish. We give thanks for and ask your blessing upon those celebrating the anniversary of their birth today. R.G. Bounds, Barbara Brown, Karen Hammond, Jamie Nix, Julie Prawl, and Hannah Stevens. And for those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, Harriet and Robert Fieldhouse, and Joanne and John Sport. We pray for healing of body, mind, and spirit for the sick in the hospital, Michael Lucas, and for those in hospice, especially Kay Westendorf. We pray for those affected by the COVID-19 virus. And we pray for recently departed Richard Hamlin and for those on the anniversary of their death. Kitty Harrison, Fern Long, Bessie Watkins, as well as those for whom the altar flowers and the sanctuary candle are given. Al Permort, Vincent Proietti, Michael Coleman, Alice and Edwin Price, and Randy Jameson. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, Mighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. God's peace to you all on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. 
we welcome any visitors we have today, either in person, uh, I see a few, or online. We're delighted that you're here. We hope you will take your place as a member of this parish. If you're online, you can just click Next Steps. You'll be well on your way. Or you can email me or any member of the clergy. My personal email address is cwilson at redeemersarasota.org. We love meeting newcomers. Check your bulletin uh, or the weekly e-blasts for all the latest digital formation opportunities. If you don't get the e-blasts, you can sign up on the homepage. You really should get those. That's really the, the way to stay connected with the parish, especially in these times. The rector's class returns online at the moment, beginning this Tuesday evening, and we begin a new series, which we think is a really timely series, Back to Basics. We'll take a look at basic Christian doctrine. We begin with the Lord's Prayer online at 6.30 this Tuesday. Tomorrow evening, there are three formation opportunities. Hey, there's no Monday night football, right? <laughs> so now Monday nights are formation nights. You can join me at 6.30 tomorrow evening, and I'll talk a little bit more about the Gospel reading from today. At 6 p.m., you uh, might enjoy the SAS class. That's our single adult Sunday school meeting on Zoom at the moment, and you can get the Zoom link by contacting the parish office. Or you might like the night shift, women's book group at 6.30 via Zoom. Rally Sunday, you remember that phrase? Well, it's when we kick off Christian formation and programming for children and youth. We're going to do that, um, we usually do it before school, but this year we waited a little bit. We're going to do it on the 13th. Details are in your bulletin. A big part of that kickoff will be a drive through experience Sunday evening from 5 to 6. Remember we said we're doing everything, we're just being innovative and safe about it. So uh, nothing, nothing slowing down here. Got a question for you. Do you know a 7th grader? I live with one. <laughs> if you know a 7th grader, that person should be attending youth confirmation classes at Church of the Redeemer. They begin on the 23rd. They're going to last an hour. It continues through both the autumn and spring terms. We've found a way to do it in person safely or simultaneously digitally. So this is your chance to be an evangelist. <laughs> if you know a seventh grader, they should take part uh, in this class. Father Wood has all the information, uh, so I invite you to contact him. A word about baptisms. You know, we've been on this push to make new Christians. Well, we had a baptism yesterday morning. Uh, we have an entire household conversion and being baptized in two weeks. That's biblical, pretty cool. Uh -huh. And we even have a backyard baptism in the works. So give thanks to God that... Um, he is alive and drawing souls into union with himself. Remember when it's time to receive communion, if you'll come and stand on the Red Cross, uh, Father Chris will place the host in your hand, and we ask you to just return to your pew via the side aisles and then communicate yourself at that time. Finally, Sarasota County Schools begin tomorrow, and many schools are already in session. I ask you to join the parish and let's keep all of them, uh, the students, the teachers, volunteers, let's keep them all covered in prayer for a very safe autumn term. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father. 
now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. 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 The gifts of God for the people of God. A prayer of spiritual communion. O most blessed Savior, in union with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I pray that you come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. O come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.